Well, I'd like to welcome you again to TheUnclaimedTruth.com. My name is Dale Raymond, as some of you already know from logging on to this web page in the past. My prayer and hope is that God will use me today to share something that will stir your heart and turn you back to God. That's the whole purpose of these broadcasts on the internet. Before we start today, I would like to pray. Father God, I thank you for each and every one that you have led to this web page, Father God. Father, I thank you again for making it possible for me to have a website and to be able to be used of you, Father God. Father, I pray for each and every one that is listening right now that you would open their ears, give them ears to hear and eyes to see, and a heart to perceive the amount of love that you have for them. For it is written in the scriptures that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, I know that the love that you have for your creation, especially humanity, for it is in humanity that you dwell and live and move and talk to your people. Father, just touch their hearts, turn them back to you, Father God. Use me this day, fill my mouth with the words that they need to hear to set at liberty those that are bound. And I'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for what you're about to do. In the mighty name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Today has been laid on my heart to share with you from the scripture. I use a lot of scripture when I've talked to you in the past, but today the Lord has asked me to come to you out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Those of you that have a Bible, you can... Follow me along if you want to, or you can check it out later. Just take a pencil and paper and write it down, because what I'm going to share is the revelation that God has given me from these scriptures. And when you read them, you don't have to get the same revelation. You may see it a different way, and that's okay, because that inspires me when you hear from God for yourself. I've taught over the 27 years wherever God has had me to establish ministries. And I've always said to the people, know God for yourself. My goal is, is that you would hear his voice. And that you would have a personal relationship with him. And as Terry and I were talking before this broadcast today, uh, we were talking about prayer. What is prayer? And in a lot of your minds, it's getting down on your knees and speaking uh, the way traditional Christians would. Oh, our Heavenly Father, please have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. And all of that, I'm not saying it's wrong. But to me, prayer is communication. Pouring out your heart what you mean and what's on your heart, what's bothering you. To me, I think the greatest prayer is, Oh, God, help me! That's probably the greatest prayer that you could ever say. It's making, realizing that God is your friend. And you talk to Him like your friend. Yes, He's your Father. Yes, He's holy. Yes, yes, yes to all the questions. I can say yes, because they've all came up in my mind over the time that God has called me to minister. But the reality is, is telling God what's on your heart. Not trying to find some religious words or find something you think God wants to hear. Yes, you reverence Him. He is the Almighty God. He's the all-powerful God. But greater than that, He's your Father. My goodness, 
we being evil know how to give good gifts to our Father, how much more will our Heavenly Father give to us? My God, He paid a price to remove the sin debt, to forgive you, so that you can communicate with Him without guilt and shame, without condemning yourself. Let us go to the Scripture, First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, excuse me, chapter five, verse thirteen. I read from a New King James Bible. This is what the Father has taught me to read from. What you hear today is what God has taught me, for I was unable to read of myself. Father, help me. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ constrains us because we judge thus or this way. That if one died for all, then all died. Christ died on that cross for all of you and me and everyone upon this earth to remove sin, the guilt, condemnation from our lives. If one died for all, then all died. And if he, if he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. What that says to me is, I have no more right to live my life any way I want to. The life I live, I live for Christ. The Apostle Paul said it another way, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Though I live, it's no longer I, but the Christ who liveth in me. Therefore, from now on, we, verse 16, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. What I see in that verse is very simple. Jesus Christ walked according to the flesh. He was all man, all God, and not denying the deity of Christ that was in Jesus, the man. Jesus walked through this earth in the flesh. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling amongst us. Well, I got a news flash for you. The Word is flesh and still lives amongst us, for that Word is God, and He lives in you and He lives in me. And He wants you to realize that if you will allow Him to live through you, you will realize that we cannot judge anybody by what they're doing. We have to see by the Spirit. We have to look and see that when one died, we all died. And if one rose, then we all rose too with him. It says so in Colossians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. What that means to me no, the world didn't pass away. No, the world's still doing its same old thing. But the way I see it is different now. Prayer doesn't change the world. Prayer changes the way I view the world. How do I view the world? I view them sometimes through the scriptures, sometimes by revelation, by Him speaking to me. Sometimes God will show me uh, things that are going on in a person's life, but if I look at the outside, boy, they all look prim and proper and got fine suits on, and in this world they look pretty successful. 
And by all means, they are in this world. But on the inside, they're tormented. Reminds me of a time when Jesus talked to the Pharisees in Matthew 23, talking to them about how they cleaned up the outside of the cup, but the inside was full of extortion and dead man's bones. Did God show me those things to condemn that man? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. God showed me those things that I might speak a word of life into that man. God showed me those things to fulfill this scripture where that I would not judge according to the outward appearance. That I would not judge according to the flesh. When I judge according to the law of sin and death and condemnation, I'm judging by the flesh. And I tell you, that is not what God wants us to do. He come to set us free from the law of sin and death and condemnation. Is there something wrong with it? Absolutely nothing wrong with the law. But I can tell you this, God don't want you to live under sin and death and condemnation. God don't want you to serve him because you made a law out of this book. God wants you to serve him because of the great love he has for you. It isn't that you've loved God first, it's because God loved you first. Contrary to most teachings, you didn't choose God. God chose you and ordained you and appointed you for a time such as this. That was verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Look at things from the newness of life. How can I do that, preacher? How can I, Dale, how can I do that? I'm just a man. Well, so am I. But I can tell you, I can see things different today, and they're all brand new. I stand in awe every day at the newness of this world and the newness of God. Verse 18, Now all things, do you hear me? My Bible says, Now all things, how many things? All things. There's one word in the Bible that any theologian will tell you that you can't translate any other way but all. All means all, and that's all all means, and that's all all we ever will mean. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's what I'm sharing with you today. The ministry of reconciliation. Turn to God. Ask God to show you. Don't run to a pastor. Don't run to another man. Go to God. God will teach you. That's who taught me. God will show you. Well, what if I'm wrong? Well, what if you're wrong believing God? Isn't that a horrible thing? That you would be wrong to trust in God with all your heart? Boy, that'd be a horrible thing. Did I just believe God for too much? That's been said about me many times by my friend Donnie Johnson. You may have heard me mention him in the last broadcast. He used to introduce me, and it kind of bothered me. Because, number one, I don't feel like I'm better than anybody else in this world. In fact, sometimes I feel the least qualified to do what I'm doing today. But I tell you, I do it by the appointment and power of the living God. Donnie used to bring me to the front, and he said, when you folks get to heaven, he said, you're going to find Dale there. And over the door where Dale will be, you'll find a sign that says, the man that believed God for too much. You know, I take that as a great high compliment, as if you really could believe God for too much. Sometimes I don't think I believe God for enough because God said I'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask. I want to stay with my text, but I also have to be obedient to the voice of God and put in where God wants me to. Not to show you how what I know, but to show you how God can use you if you'll let him. 
Okay, so what? Some will call you a heretic. Wow, wow, big deal. You're running with a good company. That's what they call Jesus. Some will tell you you took it out of context. And I'm sure some probably might be viewing this and say, who's this guy I think he is to do that? He's taking that out of context. Well, maybe I am, brother. But it's only out of context according to your religious traditions. It's only in your thinking. Because I just read all things of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world. The world? You mean everybody, brother? Yep, that's what it says. He was reconciling the world to himself. Don't forget what well, we started up there in verse 14. If one died, we all died. Well, if one was crucified, then we all were crucified. What were we crucified to? Sin and death in the law. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to him. Hmm. That reminds me of Isaiah 43, Brother Terry. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Says God does not only forgive your sins and your trespasses, but says he don't remember them no more. Wow. Oh, did that shock you? God don't remember them no more. Ah, I see the question that popped in your mind, because it popped in mine too. Well, if God don't remember my sins, then who's accusing me of these sins? Well, more than likely yourself. Be number one. Oh, you're such a sinner, you know. you oh, so unworthy of God, you know, brother. Well, brother, you're nothing but a sinner. You ain't nothing but filthy rags. Your righteousness ain't nothing but filthy rags. Excuse me, Jesus Christ is my righteousness, and he sure ain't filthy rags. And I'm telling you, he's your righteousness also. Do you dare to believe it? I do. Not because of some cockamania thing. Go read Colossians. When he was raised up, you were raised up. When he went to the Father, you were presented to the Father, and your Bible says you were presented holy, blameless, irreproachable in the sight of God. I'll proclaim it for you. But it takes you to proclaim it also. I can forgive your sins because the Bible says God gave me that power. Jesus told his disciples, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And whose sins you retain, they are retained unto you. That's why I can walk in forgiveness towards everybody today. Because I've received that forgiveness. And because the Bible clearly says, Jesus said, who sinned you, Dale Raymond, forgive, they are forgiven. How do I do that? Based on what I've been reading to you, based on the blood of the cross, based on one sacrifice for all. That's how you can do it. No, I'm not crazy. Go and read the story in Mark chapter 2. When you get to verse 10, you will find the words of Jesus. It was during the time that he healed the paralytic. Jesus said to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven. Oh, the Pharisees and the religious leaders of his time, they threw a fit. Go read it. It's there. And then Jesus said these profound words. This was done so that you could see that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. Let me share something with you. I'm not being smart. I love you people. I'm not coming against <coughs> you. I want you to turn to God and let God teach you. 
I want you to be restored back to God to a personal relationship with Him. That's my only purpose. It's the only reason that I come and go on to the airways of the world. Yeah, I know i got a lot of judges out there and they're going to judge me. So what? I tell you, I've been judged in Christ and I've been found righteous and so have you if you will accept it. It says that this was done so that you would see that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. God has given you the power to forgive others. But let me tell you, the hardest one you'll ever forgive, and I speak by experience, and I'm speaking to you what I hear. Dale Raymond, I was the hardest one to forgive because I thought I had to do this and I had to do that to be acceptable in the sight of Christ. When I found out that he had already accepted me, he had already forgiven me. Whoo! Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, it is exciting. It's hard for me to sit in a chair and minister to you, but that's the way God chose it for today. But I want you to realize, I don't care what your mama said about you, I don't care what your daddy said about you, I don't care what some preacher said about you. God loves you just as you are. Your sins are forgiven. God don't remember your sins no more. Yes, 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 you must confess that God sent a son. No question about that. But you already know that. Some of you have said the center of prayer so much, and yet your lives are still upside down. Can I tell you a newsflash? I know a lot of preachers, including this one. In the natural, there's things in my life that are upside down. But you know something? If God forgave me, I'm not going to condemn myself. And I don't want you to either. I don't want you to get arrogant about it. And I want you to think you're better than somebody else because they may still preach the law of sin and death. You know what? Let God be God in their life. But you be freed. You have a clean conscience towards God. Oh, they'll come along and they'll try to tell you this. They'll try to tell you that. But you seek God for yourself. You listen to his voice. I challenge you today, those of you that are preachers, those of you, I'm not saying what you're teaching your people's wrong. That's not what I'm here for. I told you, I don't condemn no man. If God didn't condemn me, I know he didn't condemn you. And if he didn't condemn you, I sure ain't going to do it, brother. You can understand that, please. God sent not his son, Dale Raymond, into the world to judge you nor condemn you. He sent me here to love you right where you're at. Doesn't mean I have to agree with your theology. I don't have to agree with your doctrine. What I have to do is hear the voice of God and obey. Jesus said, those that are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Jesus also said, who is my mother, my brothers, and my sister? Who's my mother and my brothers and my sister? But I tell you, those that hear my voice and obey, these are my mother, brothers, and sisters. Does that mean the rest weren't? No! He was making a point. To hear the voice of God and obey. Hear the voice of God and obey. You go back through the Old Testament, you always see the same thing. Hear my voice and obey. If you hear my voice this day and not harden your heart, you shall enter into my rest. Always talks about the voice of God. I don't know what that was all about, but I can tell you one thing. I'm going to follow God, no matter if I do get away a little bit and you think I'm a little bit goofy. That's all right. I think I'm a little goofy too sometimes. But you know what? I still love God. Jesus Christ is Lord. God sent His Son. He paid an awesome price so I could sit here today and share the love of God with you. Not religiously. 
I have nothing to gain, as I've told you many, many times on this network or uh, web page is what it's called. I'm sorry, I'm not used to it. I have no church. I don't have no place where you send your money. Ain't got no books, ain't got no tapes. All I've got is what God gave me to share with you. And in doing so, I hope that some of the guilt and shame will leave you and you'll turn to Christ and realize how much He loves you. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. The word of reconciliation, real simple. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the earth, then the end shall come. When we come to a Christ consciousness that the kingdom of God is in the hearts of men walking this earth today, and that kingdom of God breaks forth like a river, the righteousness, joy, and peace of the Holy Ghost will be spread and shed abroad in the hearts of all men. The light of God is in every man right now, preacher. All we got to do is speak and bring it forth. Proclaim the truth that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Proclaim the truth that there was one sin debt paid for all of humanity. That's all there is to it, people. It's that simple. Don't make it more complicated than it ought to be. God is so simple that a child can understand it. I had to say one time, Brother Terry, uh, Jesus said, except you become as a little child. Boy, did that ever trigger me off. I mean, I went out, whoo, whoa, wait a minute. And I got to thinking, what a little kid goes and does a word search. He don't. He hears his father's voice and he believes what his daddy said. It's just that simple. And I pray today that God has spoken to you. In the event that you do want to get a hold of me, I ain't hiding from nobody. I have a cell phone number. I carry it with me. It's on my hip right now in this broadcast. It's area code 909 557 Six seven four five. If you want to contact me by email, my son-in-law has sent me up an email, and it's a voice of God, all one word, at gmail.com. And you can reach me <coughs> at those, or you can contact Terry at Miracles on the Streets. He has a broadcast on the webcam also on the, a web page. Wonderful man of God. He'd be glad to hear from you. He's the one that God used to set this up so that I could speak a word of truth into your life and set at liberty those that are bound. God bless you until the next time. Call upon the Lord and he will answer and show you great and mighty things you know not. Here's the scenario. You hear the siren. An announcement takes place in heaven. There has been a robbery. Angels are dispatched. The reply comes back. We caught him and taken back to the Lord. The Lord says, you've done a twofold robbery. You ask, wherein have I robbed you? The Lord replies, for more about this exciting book, please go to theorygiftbaskets.com or Amazon.
Why are so many hurting and feeling empty inside even after their weekly so-called church service? Think about it. How can the man-made rituals with all the many formulas, doctrines, regulations, and any other items such as stained glass, collection plates, highly designed keys, and the elevated platform for some highly educated preacher change a single life? But one man hung on the cross 2,000 years ago can. The crap that's been flowing from these pool pits and these things called church with their self-centered man-made idols have brainwashed many into believing that theirs is the only path to follow. It certainly is not. There are many programs such as Vacation Bible School, Holiday Place, Covered Dish Dinners, Bazaars, and maybe throw in a car wash are all designed to bring in more people, which will bring in more of that coveted money. As long as man places his carnal mind and hand in his desire for notoriety and power and continues with his laws of judgment, rules, and regulations with the failures of those that have preceded him, this thing called church will continue to fall. It has to. When Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, he wasn't talking about Peter, but the revelation that was given to him by the Holy Spirit. The church is a people. A gathering of two or three, with Jesus the Christ of God in the midst of those seeking his way, truth, and life. This is a far cry from these things that look more like a whorehouse, pimping their wares with their painted up faces, trying to get as many would-be's to enter their doors and into their pockets. God is the God of love, mercy, and grace, not that the man that flesh man is placed on his underlings. I wrote a 252-page book called The Two Trees Within. Glad to send you a free copy, or you can download it at www.themanwithin1.com.